hey everyone welcome back to the channel today we are diving into traffic one of the most powerful reverse boxes out there uh if you're running multiple web apps in docker you will want to automate ssn and that's exactly what traffic does best so in this video i will show you how traffic works why it is the best thing to have and how to set it up in docker so let's get into it so what is traffic um traffic in simple terms is a reverse proxy and a load balancer that sits in front of your web services uh it listens to the incoming requests and forwards them to the right containers based on the domain path or headers uh why is traffic the best thing to have or why is it special uh one it's dynamic unlike other uh proxies reverse proxies uh you can set it to watch your docker environment and auto configure routes as containers go up once you spin a container it will watch it and uh, auto configure the route two if you don't want to set it automatically to look for the containers or to watch the containers then as you spin your containers you can uh, configure labels and again traffic will monitor those and once you your container is up it will pick those labels and start using them to uh, redirect the request as the incoming request another thing is it will handle let's encrypt ssl certificates for you automatically so you don't need to worry about like uh, putting the certificates for each and every app how do we set up uh, traffic in docker so we are going to spin up a docker container for the traffic then we will uh, test uh, the configuration with our internet container that we created uh, when we were installing uh, docker compose docker and docker compose so we'll configure labels on both container the traffic one and uh, the nginx container that we created uh, on the previous video when we were installing docker and docker compose so let's start talking about uh, the directory setup for traffic as you can see on here i have a directory the main directory traffic inside this main directory i got uh, two other subdirectories data logs then i have two files in here i have the docker compose dot yamu and then i have the dot env where i'm going to put in my passwords and uh, the api keys so the first thing you need to do is create the directory create the subdirectory uh the subdirectories uh go ahead and create the dot env file to be empty for now and uh create your docker compose dot yaml file then uh from there let's see what the configuration is for the yaml file and as you can see i have a uh, under services i have the traffic as a service i'm always pulling the latest image but you can specify the specific uh, version if you want or if you have any reason to restrict to that version then i'm giving it a container name which is traffic as always restart unless stopped uh, then i'm not giving it any privilege i have a network which i call web i'll show you how to create that network then i'm opening this uh port 80 and 443 every entry point will use a different port so all those ports will need to be added under the port section as we'll see we have two entry points one using port 80 and the other one using port 443 then uh, under environment i have my cfp api this naming is the standard according to the traffic manual under and um, environment variables and i have a I have a variable in my dot uh, env uh, file that's called uh, cf api email that is keeping my email address so on these i'm referencing to the dot env as you can see down here i've introduced the env file so when it runs it will go and check on the env pull in the email pull in the token and also the dashboard traffic password then i have volumes this is the local time it's read only then i'm also entering the socket for the docker and uh, on my data folder is where i have my traffic dot yamu also have my config dot yamu and the acme dot json where the traffic will be storing the let's encrypt uh, certificate information then i have my labels for these container i've enabled them to two then i'm also directing them to my url for the traffic and finally i have my network again and i'm setting external to true so with that said go ahead and create uh, the acme.json file inside the data directory and once that is done make sure you set uh, the permissions to 600 and uh, the command to do that is uh, this is the command to set the permission to 600 and we can confirm whether i have these permissions to be data acme. so yeah it's set to read and write for the user administrator and everything uh the group and other users Users, they have no access to read or write so with that said there is nothing we're putting in this file so the file should be empty so now we can go ahead and uh 
create the traffic .yaml, and this is the configuration to put on that file so we are setting our api dashboard to two we are also creating entry points and we're creating one for the web http uh, using the port uh, the port 80 then i'm also setting a redirection and the entry point for the redirection is https so any traffic that is http will be redirected to https then i have the entry point for https uh you find some people naming this as web and this a secure web so you can name it whatever you want but make sure anywhere you want to use it then you refer to the correct name so i will stick with http and https this will be on port 443 then on providers i'm uh, creating a docker provider and uh, it has the path to the socket for the container and note i have uh, exposed by default set to false this is because i don't want uh, traffic to go and uh, breed my containers as i spin and set up routes for me i want to use the option to uh, to set labels as i did on this container so that way traffic will just come and read the labels that's why it's false if you want to it go and uh, set it set your, the routes automatically for you then set it to true then i'm also pointing into a config.yaml which is a static uh, this is for anything that is outside docker for example my proxmox which is outside or i have another service that is outside docker that i want to that i wanted to use traffic so under this file is where i'll configure it then for my certificates resolver i'm using crowdflare and uh, i'll be using acme then set in your email so go ahead and change this to your email address refer to your acme json file as always when you're starting the first uh, spin use the staging instead of going to production once the staging works then switch it to production and uh, spin it then the provider is crown fair for the dns challenge and these dns records are these are dns ip addresses are crowdflare dns so the next uh, file to create is the config.yaml under the config i got uh, the routers here so the first one i'm creating is for proxmox i wanted to point to https that's the entry point to use the entry points we just created on uh, on the traffic.yaml then i'm giving it uh, the fully qualified domain name i'll be using the service is proxmox then i'm creating my services this is my service proxmox this is the ip address of my proxmox server then for the middleware if you're using any middleware this way you will come and list them for the redirects that's the one i'll be using to redirect everything https http to https that's all i got for those three files because acme has nothing on it so on your dot env file this the format it will be it's a cf api email put in your email address that you'll be using on the uh, cloud fair uh, this is the other variable cf uh, dns API a token and the traffic dashboard credentials so let me show you how to create uh, the network how to create the password for the dashboard and where to get the uh, email and the token on the cloud for your website so let's do that right now so this is the command to create uh, your network so it's docker network create then this is the network name so mine is web if you're using any other network name home services or whatever name you have change this to your name now how do we create the password i always do anytime i'm installing any new package i always start with the update so do a sudo update but let's do that it will ask you for the password so go ahead and uh, get that sorted so i got mine updated then uh, i have to install uh, let me clear my screen to put this thing up there. so uh, i need to install the apache tools i have it installed but and now the command to create your password will be this command so make sure to change uh, user here to your preferred user let's say admin or whatever user you want to create let's say joe and uh, hit enter so it will ask you for the password so for example if i did this one it will ask me for the new password once you type your new password it will also ask uh, ask you to confirm the password and uh, let me create something here and do funny thing and this will be your this is what you need to copy and paste under here so if i do copy let me see if we got it that's what you put in there so that's how your traffic dashboard credential will look like so now let's go and get the api email and the api API token for the API token go to your Cloudflare dashboard then go to the user profile and here go to your API token so I have already my API token but you go create new one then use add zone DNS use template then it is a zone on this field DNS and then pick your this should be edit include it's a specific zone then pick your zone if you want to limit the IP address that can access your domain then put in the IP addresses here for me I have nothing to change in there time to leave it's as is 
let's send you go ahead and continue to summary and finally create token there will be a token for you uh generated go ahead and copy that token and uh that is what you use in here then the email address is the email address you're using so for those who are not using uh cloudflare then when you come to the documentation and go to https ttls let's encrypt and go down scroll down you're going to have providers so select your provider and uh, follow the configurations the variables that you need to fill in for that for your specific provider so it's not a must to use cloudflare but it's simpler easier to use secure so with that said you should be good to go so I go ahead and save my configuration then spin up these containers so i have everything saved so let me do ls dash l and we need to check on data and acumen so as you can see it has a zero size so let's go ahead and spin uh, our container and see what the size is so using docker compose app dash d it's pulling the images starting and the container is up uh if i go and ls the aqua json as you can see now the file size is not zero anymore so that means we are getting something i'm not going to open that file because it has my private keys and uh, so on but as you can see it has file on it so i'll go ahead and access the dashboard and see what we get so here is my dashboard as you can see still have to confirm uh, security let me maximize this dark mode let's check the certificate it's not secure more information and uh, here is the window and as you can see i have certificate which is verified and it is a staging let's Let's encrypt which is a success for us so now i need to go ahead and change and use production so as well if i go ahead to my demo i can get to it okay let me go ahead and fix that one to use the production server so i'm going to uncomment that line and comment that line and if i save that file that should be it for now another thing to do is go ahead and empty your atmed.json file and save it make sure it's blank then we're going to pin up this container again then and on our test app this is the app we used uh, earlier remember i had used uh, on the previous video i had used uh, port 8 uh, 8000 pointing to port 80 so for now i'm not going to use the port that's why i have them commented i've added labels and then with the labels and uh, this is my fully qualified domain for this container and the port is 80 so for this one let me go ahead and cd to dash test app here we go and i'll just go ahead and spin this container as well and with that said i should be able to access this container so yes i have access to it let me spin this one and for some reason the certificate is not switching from staging to production so i had to clear my cache or you can clear your cache on the browser or uh, just exit from your browser and open it again so once i did that the certificates now are showing as you can see my connection is secure and if you go to more information it's a let's encrypt now certificate and uh, that's all we need to do if you also refresh this one the connection is secure as well and that's all you need for to set up your traffic and uh, to have it up and running um so for any other of your apps you are going to create the labels you can google those labels and see what labels work best with the app you're working on but my labels are almost like the same uh for most of the apps they just need uh you to route redirect and uh yeah that, that's pretty much all you need to so yeah i've remembered uh i created uh 30 config yamo initially i'd called it uh proximal i've just changed it to simba local dkslab uh dot local dot dkslab dot com and uh as you can see i'm able to access my proximal from here and uh, the certificate is secure as well you can add as many external services i mean like uh, things outside your docker so long as they're supported you can find that the documentations online and uh, <clears throat> you can add them on your static config the config.yaml and uh, you'll be able to access most of your devices services are uh, secure with https and without any warning to keep on telling you you don't it's not a secure website you're trying to access so there's no more annoying none ssl security uh thing so yeah to wrap up traffic is uh just a super smart reverse proxy as we said earlier it will detect your services so if you wanted to go ahead and pick them from docker straight or you wanted to read uh, the labels it will pick them as you add them so that's is super 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 awesome for somebody who is uh, self-hosting many services again 
it looks awesome when you have a certificate so yeah that's it for today if you found this video helpful please go ahead and hit that like button subscribe uh, for more videos like this one about self hosting content don't forget to hit that notification bell to know when we drop another video if you want uh, me to do a video of something you want to work on or something you like just drop it on the comment below and let me know thanks for watching and happy home lab see you on the next one bye bye